being a coal-based company, the real things that really, really threatened us. But in that threat, it actually opened our eyes. You know coal, there are many uses of coal, but the products that we normally sell our coal, then the markets that we sell our coal to, they predominantly talk to, to the steel industry, and they talk to the power generation industry. Now, during this period, we were introduced to digitization, the Internet of Things. We were introduced to 3D printing. I don't know how many of you actually know what 3D printing is. I was shocked to know that in Dubai, there's a whole office block that has been 3D printed. Now, if you look at the composite material of this building, it doesn't talk to anything relating to steel. On the other hand, we've got a whole drive around renewable, smart grid, distributed power, and you say to yourself, with the advancements of battery storage, when does renewables become the new base load? And therefore, will there ever be future coal base loads that are being developed into the future? And suddenly, it dawned to us that maybe we've got a nice ride for the next 20 years in coal, as we understand it today. But if you just look within the South African environment, if you look at the integrated resource plan, whereby already, in terms of the energy mix for South Africa, there is only 2,500 megawatts that have been made available. We've just had the announcement, I think it was yesterday or the day before yesterday, that already 900 of that has been already spoken for. So there's not many new coal-fired IPPs or power stations that are going to be created in South Africa. It's going to be talking about mostly gas. It's going to be talking mostly around the N-word. You see? Oh, yeah, the, the, the nice lucky, lucky thing about Exaro, by the way, and uh, I'm not saying that you should go and buy our shares, but the nice thing that we do have that gives us a real competitive advantage, advantage is the fact that, that we've got these two long-term contracts supplying Matimba Power Station and Medupi in Khodakhalek for the next coming 40 years. So we've got a nice solid base with which we don't have to worry about what happens to coal prices globally, whatever. At least we've got this solid base. But then the question is that, how do you maximize this base in actually to take this organization of today into another world-class organization? So it's about how do we protect what we have and make it the best that we can be while there is still a window ahead? And also, what are we starting to look at in terms of what are the things that we need to do into the future to be able to be relevant in that new future? And how are we going to do that? The other thing that we had to really ask ourselves is, if you look at the global top 10 risks as defined by the World Economic Forum, three of those top 10 talk to energy security, they talk to food security, they talk to water security. Now, I don't know whether you know, but mining houses are probably the, some of the largest, you know, real estate owners. We are landlords. We've got so much land that is really underutilized. And yet, at this time last year, we had issues around food, cost of food, <coughs> drought, and yet, when we are busy operating a mine or closing a mine, there are mines that we've closed 20 years ago, by the way, but every year we are paying for each mine about 20 million rand just to close it, to rehabilitate it, and you don't even know when you're ever going to get a closure certificate. New legislation says that now you've got to also put a water treatment plant there so that you avoid decanting. So, I'm in a community that was once very dependent on this asset, this mine, while it was still operating. Today, because it closed, 
you've got 70% unemployment, high levels of impoverishment, and I've got this asset sitting here, totally underutilized, but it's a cost to me. And therefore, we start saying, what does a new world can be but addressing the issues and the demands of our country, of Africa, of the world. So we had to look at these things. But in doing that, looking into the future, understanding the fact that there are new technological platforms that allow those things to happen, the question then is, if you start in applying those technological platforms, even in your business of today, the chances are that you're going to start displacing people. Because by, by, by just doing that, you're going to bring in data analytics, you're going to be digitizing, you're going to be, and these are going to have AI capabilities. So your processes and the way you do your business of today is going to mean that you're going to do more with less people. What happens to these people? So these are the challenges and that, you know, in your normal, because I've done my MBA, you, you don't deal with case studies that challenge you in that way. This was, real, this was a real case study for us of our own survival, not only today, but into the future. And so, in that, there were some very important things for us that we said, if we're going to be relevant into the future, we need to have a purpose as an organization that says that not only are we doing these things and we can make returns for our shareholders, but we can have meaningful social impacts in what we do and where we are doing it because if we don't address that part also while we are doing it, the very thing that we are trying to protect here will not last. Because, as they say, the natives will.